Good afternoon. Uh, we're coming to you from the uh, Ford Room in the Rector Community Museum. Our guest today is Kelly Baker. He, uh, he's another lifetime resident here in, in Rector and uh, has been active in so, so many things. And so he was, uh, he's willing to do this interview and we appreciate it. Good afternoon, Kelly. Good afternoon, Joey. How are you, man? Good I'm to be good. here. I'm great, yeah. And what a life it has been. <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> so, so how about, uh, give me a little bit of your family history. Let's start there. Woo, I got a crazy family history. Uh, the, the, I guess the shortest one would be uh, my mother's side of the family were the Finleys and my dad's side were the Bakers. Uh, you know, my mother is originally from Kennett. My dad is originally from here. They actually grew up in Boys Full on a sharecropping farm out there. I think they made about $300 a year back in those days for yeah. my grandmother, my grandfather, and uh, my uh, all of my aunts and uncles. They had nine kids out there. So You know, I don't know if you know this or not, but uh, yeah, I went to school with with Mike. Yeah. We were the same. Class. He was the he was the baby, see. Yeah, yeah. So, he, he he came to uh you were young like in the him. second grade. Yeah. yeah. And and uh, we were best friends and still you know still friends today. They uh they, a mile, million miles away, but yeah. Yeah. They grew up in uh friendship is where uh my grandfather was was a young boy in friendship township over around Marmaduke. And uh then they ended up making their way here to Boydsville. But dad, I think he, some of the, some of the older siblings, my aunts and uncles went to school in Marmaduke. And then like you say, Mike started here in the second grade. So I guess they would have been in Marmaduke until about then. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so, but as for me, I was born in Rector and have been here forever. Yeah. So. Yeah. Same. Yeah. Well, that's, that's a, that's, that's pretty cool. Uh, you Mike know. was a, Fantastic basketball player from from what I understand. He, he was good. Radius was pretty good, but Mike was the man. Uh, you know, some people say, "Well, that was that was junior high," but in the ninth grade, he was. Uh, we won the state championship, and, yeah. and he was the most favorite player in the state. Wow. That's a, that's a big deal. Even even it was junior high it was a big oh, yeah. deal. Yeah. And you know, unlike a lot of the other bakers, he's kept most of his hair for the whole time. So. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, he has, Andy. Yeah. Yep. I unfortunately have the baker curse. So anyway. All right. Uh, uh, let's look at this. Uh, did you ever get a haircut there? Uh, yes, I did. Yeah. I did get a haircut there. Um, <laughs> I remember I got a sucker after that haircut, and my grandma Clayton, uh, she was married to Jack Clayton, who owned Clayton Insurance outside of town here, but she cut my hair, but she and mom were out of town at some point, and dad took me up here to the barber shop and got my hair cut, and it was probably one of the greatest experiences of my life. <laughs> it was like I became a man that day. That, that, was, that, was, the, that was the day. That was the day. <laughs> Well, you know, I can't imagine that anybody who ever lived in Rector didn't get their hair cut there. I, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, here's, <laughs> Everybody here's, did back then. <laughs> that's right. And Dad would just, you know, the world's so different. He just left me there, and he went and did police business because he was on the yeah. police department here. And he, he went down to the police department, did whatever they did, and there I was sitting there, left with the man, and he cut my hair. And then when we were finished, I was sitting on, on the – out in the front on a bench there eating a sucker and he went Dad in and paid the 75 cents or a dollar or what it was and probably yeah. of course at your age is probably higher than that i don't uh, know i was pretty young but yeah we talked about this you said you went to kindergarten in this building right not that building not no. that building no okay. the uh the building that i went to kindergarten in that building was gone it's where the football players practice today there was probably a bigger building there, but there were several yep. small buildings. Well, now that, if you look, mm -hmm. there's that building. I, I bet you went to kindergarten. Yes. In this building over here. Exactly. Yeah, that's right. Yes. I forgot. There we uh, go. Yeah. yeah, let me, let me. There were a couple of buildings over there that, uh, that was the home that ag were building that and the ag, ag department yep. and the band building was back there. I, right. Yeah. And when I started, yeah. when I started kindergarten, that is where we went to kindergarten. That, 
the main building there had been torn down, I guess, and that was our playground right out in there. Yeah. We didn't have any playground equipment to speak of, but that was our playground. Yeah. In yeah. kindergarten. Well, let's move up a little farther in time. Check this out. Hey, that's a cool looking dude. <laughs> it is, isn't Look it? at that guy. He's a good looking youngster. <laughs> Who is that? Well, that's uh, <laughs> uh, that's Joe Cool. It is. It must be Joe Cool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, uh, you, you know, uh, that was one of the shows where had had a live band. Yes, you were and, in that and live I was, band. I was in the band. Yeah. That was, yeah. That was that was, that was a uh, fun time. Yeah. You and uh, uh, Larry Nord and Keith Manning. Uh, had Keith Manning. We had Keith Manning on the bass and we had Don on the drum. Don Pickler was on the yes, yeah. Don Pickler. I grew up fishing in Pickler's Pond out there. <laughs> That's back when they had the fishing going on in the pond. But yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was uh, Greece. That was in 92, 1992, I think. Uh, I can't remember what. What, what a, what a wily was. crew of guys that was there. That well, was, yeah. uh, so 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 name them from left to right there. From the left to right, you have Colin Earls, you have Stacy Benson, you have yours truly, then you have Doyle Hartsfield oh, Doyle, and yeah. Richard Bradshaw. Wow. So never can I couldn't forget those guys. So that that was a crew, wasn't it? It was a crew. <laughs> it was quite the crew. And uh you know, we had a great time doing that show. That was a great show. And uh, when we first showed up on our first night, uh, we had begged Miss Burns to do Grease because Grease is, you know, it's classic. It's wonderful. Mm -hmm. So we had begged her to do it. And the first night we showed up to practice, three or four of the preachers from town were there telling us how they, did, they weren't oh, uh, as appreciative. Yeah as others would be. And they were marking things out of our script, you know. Couldn't say pregnant, couldn't say beer. Mm -hmm. So even in 1992, you know, that was kind of a no-no. Yeah, I, I I remember that that I had a little discussion with with my preacher and I said, look, you you think that if it was that bad, you think I would be in it? You know, I, you know, I don't, <laughs> yeah. I don't understand. You know, it kind of hurts my feeling a little bit that you think that I would be in something that wouldn't be presumable to the public right and so i think he kind of backed off a little bit it was yeah uh, it turned out it yeah. turned out to be fine and it, hey, it drew did, huge yeah. crowds and yeah man it was a sold out yeah. show every time yeah. so it was good well this may be some of those same guys right here oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> wow that is a pep rally uh in the old gym so that's in the old yeah, gym. Yeah, you can see the, see the ceiling there. Right. So I can say from left to right on this guy, the first guy there with his hand up and there's a paw on his face, that was Leonard Banning, I do believe. And then there is uh, David Scales next to him. Then there's Neil Wimberly. I'm not sure who that next guy is because there's an arm in front of his face. But then there's me. And uh, then Jason McCluskey is right on the other side of me with a huge spirit stick. So <laughs> we we actually had the police called on us a couple of times for pep rallies. They were huge back then. Oh, they yeah. were huge. Yes, they were. They were loud. Uh, so Competitive, very yes, competitive. Yes, had a great yeah. time. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, so uh, let's go back just a little bit and, and uh, oh, that is an oldie <laughs> but goodie, my friend, oldie but goodie. That's, uh, that is little Mr. Rector. I was little Mr. Rector in a corduroy suit. <laughs> so that, that guy on the right is me as a, as a young child. And, uh, that it, is, uh, is that Gwen? Is that Gwen Sanders? That I Here? don't know. I was very young. And I was happy to be there with those ladies, but, uh, I think that's Gwen Sanders, Katrina Chadwick, Teresa Collentine. I don't know the other two. And, and that, is that? Is Sarah Johnson. Sarah Johnson. Little, wow. tiny Sarah Johnson. I hope that Sarah Johnson's watching this. Yeah. We, so, we, we'll, there you go. Yeah, for those who, who don't know, we, th these are not only on Facebook, they're also on YouTube. If you search uh, Ford Room Conversations, you'll, you'll uh, find it on, on, you'll find them all on Facebook. That's awesome. So, uh, this was probably, that was probably in 1978 or so, I would say. Yeah. Because I would probably have been about five years old in that. And, uh, you know, my parents, 
Uh, didn't have a lot back then. Dad had about three jobs, I think. He was a school bus driver, and that's how I ended up getting into Little Mr. Rector. And he was a police officer, and uh, I think he drove the ambulance and all kinds of different stuff. But, uh, but, but back whatever then, money they had, they spent on that corduroy suit. <laughs> well, was that was that in the days when you drove in? Was was also the Hearst? Or was yes, that... <laughs> yes, it was the old Hearst ambulance. Looked like the Ghostbusters Hearst. It was a. Uh, it was an old one. I rode in it many times. <laughs> uh, and and this this is a this is another phase that you went through. Yeah, that's the cowboy. That's the cowboy phase, and yeah. it wasn't as much a phase as it was riding horses paid the bills at the time. <laughs> so we were we trained horses for a time, and I can remember we had about I think we had thirty horses on our place at one time, uh, maybe a couple more, but I know we had 30 and that was my, that was my personal horse. Uh -huh. And your place was out here on 49 South? Yeah, it was, of uh, it was uh, right behind Clayton Insurance. We still have the barn and everything yeah. there. We have 10 acres back there that, uh, that we grow garden and stuff on. But uh, yeah, that was, that was where we trained horses and I ended that's, up being pretty good at that. That's a, that's that's pretty fun. I, I had horses when I was before I moved into town. Some some really good days, you know, just riding out through the, through the, uh, especially we 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 lived out in the country, so we rode up and down through right. the hills and all that, you know, and and everybody who lived there had horses. We'd all get together and ride. We yeah. we we drive through what's called the Osage Trail. Yeah, uh, to the other road over there. You know, horses taught me a lot about uh, about humans. You know, it, they they just taught me how to be patient. They taught me how to be kind. They taught me that uh, you know, when there's something that big that you're dealing with, you can ask it to do a lot of things, but you can't tell it to do anything. If it doesn't want to, it's not going to. So it taught me a lot of patience and, my, and my, good things. My, my saying in, in uh, our senior, or in our, I think, yearbook was, uh, you can lead a horse to water, but get him laying on his back and float, you got some. <laughs> That's you, true. They, you know, your, yeah. your senior quote was a lot like mine. <laughs> mine was terrible, and my parents hated it, but it sounds very similar to yours. I said, too bad there's not such a thing as a golden skunk, because you'd probably be proud to be sprayed by it. <laughs> That's right. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Terrible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, oh. Okay, and and of course I, I I like this 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 uh, time of your life when yeah singing and and playing the harp That's yes a little blue stuff going on there blue stuff yeah back in those days like I say that was back in the the early nineties and back in those days if you had a couple of a couple of Caucasian gentlemen playing the blues it was different you know and uh, yeah. I I always loved the blues I. I could really get into the blues. I still love the blues. Uh, Jason McCluskey was in that picture with me. His dad, Stan McCluskey, had a huge collection of records. I mean, just a, a intense, huge yes. collection of records, the old, the old stuff. And we would go out to his place and listen to that stuff. And we would come up with songs and play. And we won a, we won a uh, talent contest here in Rector and they sent us to Memphis and uh, played at the talent show there. We didn't win, but we were considered a band because there were more than one of us. So we were, there mm. were two of us. He played a guitar, I played a harmonica. But there were huge bands there, like on professional levels. They were mm. they were big time bands. Well, what they call semi-pro. Yeah, they, they, were, they were huge. And then there was this guy they came and asked us backstage. They said, okay, what do you need us to set up on stage? And I said, we need two stools and two microphones. And they, they kind of <laughs> chuckled and said, what else? And I said, that's it. So we go you out. You made their day, I can tell you from experience. Yeah. So we go out and we play our song. And uh, it was a song that we wrote called the Cornbread Blues. And you know we're a couple of white high school kids in Memphis playing this song. And uh, you can only imagine how we felt. But at the end of our little set there, at the end of our song, the entire place erupted. 
and there had to be a thousand people in there, which was the biggest crowd we'd ever played. It was huge, and uh, we ended up winning. Uh, I think we got uh, like uh, the I Tried Award. What do they call that? The uh, I showed up and did this. <laughs> yeah. So we got one of those awards. It wasn't. Uh, it wasn't first, second, or third place, but it was honorable mention. Oh uh, yeah. yeah. Honorable mention out of those guys. You know, uh-huh. that was as good to us as anything else. Yeah. And then we went and had pizza and went to the zoo. But to play the blues in Memphis was was a great honor to me. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. We well, you know, it. it's always been a big deal to to, to perform in Memphis. Yeah. Uh, that you know, uh, I've seen a lot of performances I, there. I, yeah. I, yeah. Yeah. And I, you know, obviously, I I I was fortunate to, to you know to play there. Yeah. And. Uh, but uh, you kind of feel like you've kind of made it when you when you cross that <laughs> yeah. river and you got your guitar with you. Yeah, you know? yep, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, you know the guy that was the head of the talent show when we played up here at Rector. He said, "I'm always looking for strange and talented people. You guys are definitely strange and talented people." <laughs> I found it right here. <laughs> and so uh, it was that whole thing with uh, you know a uh-huh. couple of young kids playing blues music just wasn't something that happened all the time. It's I guess it happens more now, but it just didn't. It didn't happen a lot back then. Yeah. You know? Well, uh, I, 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 that's all the pictures I have. But but yeah. let's talk about then then far farther up into your 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 life. I, I know that you joined the military. Yeah. And uh, joined the National Guard in uh, 2007. And I joined with the 39th Infantry here in Rector because that was uh, the group here in Rector. And uh, that's who I wanted to serve with, so that's that's who I ended up being with, and uh, did 11 years of that. Uh, I was a police officer here uh, in Rector, and my dad was the chief of police for a time, and then he retired, and then I stayed on and worked, uh, and then. Uh, I've done a lot of things here in Rector. I've done everything from short order cook to cleaning out stalls to, I don't know, I've done a lot of things in Rector. But well, and, and, and when you were in the military, we talked mm-hmm. about this a while ago, you were uh, on the drug task force. Yeah. And you were Because headed. I was a police officer at the same time. They said, you're definitely going because we're doing a drug task force. Yeah. yeah. So, so you... Uh, uh, you were preparing to go where? We were we were going to Guatemala, and we had a stop in New Mexico, and we were in New Mexico. That was in 2017, and uh, we were doing exercises and things out in uh, out in the New Mexico desert, in the middle of nowhere, really, and. Uh, yeah, I had a heart attack out there. It was a widow maker heart attack, which a very low percentage of people survive anyway. But right. I was very fortunate to have survived. Uh, I give thanks to the man upstairs uh, because mm-hmm. he really, he really helped me through that. If you ever want to hear my story behind that, I can elaborate and I can give you my big God story. But God really worked a wonder on me, not just that day, uh, but. The weeks following, you know, I, I died six times the first day when they they finally got me back, and I only had 10% heart function when I was in the ICU. Mm-hmm. The doctor said that I would never recover from that because my heart had taken too much damage for too long because it took them about two hours to get me to the hospital from where it happened. And, uh, and two weeks later, inexplicably, uh, according to the doctor, I had 50% heart function. Nobody has 100, but he said that that would never happen, but two weeks later they tested me and I had 50% heart function. And you know, I've been going on ever since. But uh, you know, to give out thanks where thanks is due, and just to say a little about Rector as a community, everyone here at every church was praying for me when that happened. and. Uh, there, there's no question in my mind that those prayers took me from 10% heart function to the inexplicable 50%. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I, I've been doing, I, I have since had another heart attack. I think that that's just a habit I've gotten into, but, uh, <laughs> but I was okay on that one as well. But 
but I truly thank everybody that that prayed for me and my family at that time because it was pretty tough. It uh, so that was I, I remember that was a big deal in wrecked Arkansas. So, <laughs> it was. A, I had no yeah. idea because I was laying in the bed and uh, in. Uh, El Paso, Texas. Mm -hmm. So if you have a heart attack, the worst place to have it is in the middle of the desert. But if you read the Bible much, that's where everything happens is in the middle of the desert. <laughs> so, there you go. <laughs> you know, one more God story. but <laughs> Well, uh, uh, so then we move on up. Uh, you you have, we didn't talk about, uh, you have, you have, uh, you're married and have kids. Yep, I've got a wife, uh, my beautiful wife, Ann. Uh, we've got six children together. Um, so we've got a large family, but we've got Keely, Casey, Katie, Thomas, Aaron, and Maddie. And Maddie is 12 years old, and she goes to high school or junior high here at Rector. And... Uh, she does very well. All of our children have done well. We've got a police dispatcher who's a third generation uh, police officer or yeah. police department employee up here at Rector. And uh, we've got a registered nurse. We've got an EMT. We've got uh, a boss at an Olive Garden. So if I'm in trouble with the police, if I'm in trouble and need uh, medical or whatever intervention, or I just need something to eat at Olive Garden. I've got it covered. <laughs> just, I've got everything. Just get hungry. <laughs> yeah, I've got everything taken care of. That's pretty so. good. <laughs> That's pretty good. Well, you know, yeah. we, we have a police officer in our group, and her dad was Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I was I was remarking earlier, you know, you said your wife worries about her to an extent, but she's tough. Yeah. I, I wouldn't I wouldn't give her any problems. Yeah, no, no. She's, uh, and she doesn't, she doesn't take anything either. I don't she doesn't seem like the yeah. type. No. <laughs> No. <laughs> Does she take after you on that? You think? Uh, I, I'm not very tough, but I don't take anything. Either, there you, you go. Know? Yeah. Well. So, uh, <laughs> and, and and one thing that we that I I want to cross uh, for sure is your podcast. Now. Well, it's not necessary. It's not a podcast. It's a YouTube channel. <laughs> yeah, you're right. It's a you're, YouTube channel. I yeah. do have a YouTube channel, and I've got a couple of million views on there. Some, you know, YouTube is a strange creature. You may have a channel that has, or you may put up a video that has 10 views or 20 views. You may put something up and it may get 10,000 views, you know. And So, uh, so what, is it, what is it called? BC Tactical. BC Tactical, yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to put that up. Okay. So, so they can... Now, I can get it and, uh, you will have to be a certain type of person to watch that. I don't do a lot of ASMR videos where I'm tapping on boxes and whispering into the microphone while I eat a, <laughs> uh, strawberries or whatever. Because you know, I really, it's strange, but I see a lot of videos like that that get all these views. But mine, if you like knives, if you like the history of knives, you know, like the Bowie knife or different types of knives or... You know, if you're into Rambo, those types of things, that's or, that's basically what I talk about is stuff or, like that. Or, or BS. That's or BS. That. I'm good at, <laughs> BS. you know, you talked about the Baker family. Uh -huh. yeah, <laughs> so I right. come from a long line of professional BSers. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm I, good at it. I have, uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm slow, but look, I got it. There it is. Yep. BC, BC tactical. tactical. Yeah. yeah. And, so. uh, you know. I just talk about things that are that are amusing to me or whatever, and I, I do talk a lot about knives. And most of my fan base, and this this will be strange to to hear, but most of my fan base is in Australia. So uh, I've got some fans in Australia, and they send me packages every once in a while, which is not cheap. <laughs> right, I just, just received it. one. Yeah, I received one just about a week ago. But they send me that, and and I'll do a video on what they sent me or whatever. And I haven't done one in a while because after a while it gets to be a full time job, and you know I got right. a lot of stuff going yeah. on. So, but I plan on doing some more here in the future. So. Well, you know, the, this is kind of uh, you know the same way, you know. Uh, yeah. And, it takes, Absolutely, it takes a while to put it on. Sure, but but you know, I, I went to Alton Spears visitation the day after the after yep. the services, and and I was gone about two hours and come home and Jess said, "Boy, that was 
is a long funeral service. I said, well, I've, I've, uh, I've been over the visitation. And uh, I said, uh, I'm, a, I'm, I'm quite the personality now. She said, <laughs> I said, everybody in the room wanted to talk about, about these videos. The and, Ford Room uh, Confessions? Confessions, yeah, and, and I, I'm telling you, you, you know, it made me feel feel really good. Yeah, and you know, and they're they're all saying, you know, keep them coming. I was, I, uh, I was in Walmart one night, and uh, a guy approached me, and he said, "Hey, you're that guy," and I said, "Wasn't me. I didn't have anything to do with it." And he said, "No, no, you've got a YouTube channel." I said, "I do." And he said, "You were talking about a knife that a guy made, and there's a friend of mine, Seth Miller, who makes knives out here on the other side of Boydsville." And uh, he makes great knives, and I'm not putting in a plug for him or anything, but if sure, you like yeah, knives, look yeah. up Seth Miller because he is a hometown guy, lived here forever, and he makes knives, and he's a forge master. He, he blacksmiths whatever. You know, if you want an old-timey oil lamp or something, he makes that stuff. But anyway, yeah. uh, I've done some videos on some knives that he made me, and that guy came, and, and he said, you know, I watched this, and, man, that guy's great, and, you were really informative on the knife, and it was funny. So I said, "Well, I appreciate it." So, you know, one guy out of, you yeah, know, yeah, at Walmart it, it, that was uh, actually friendly. Yeah, it, and it, and it does make you feel good. <laughs> and what's yeah. mentioned, you know, I was I was eating the other day. And this guy came in and sat down at the table with me. And he said, "Man," he said, "My wife and I are loving these videos. You got to keep them coming." Yeah, you know. So that's so. I was actually surprised to be asked. You know, I'm I'm 50 years old now, but as far as people in Rector are concerned, I'm still a kid. Yeah. I'm a little kid. I uh, mean, too. Yeah. You know, I want to be a kid. <laughs> some, I guess so. I act like a kid, so I feel yeah. like a kid. But yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, I've had people say you should do this and you should do that, and I say I don't think anybody would want me to do it. They think I'm 12 years old still. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, well, I, I don't want to. I, I try to plug things too, and you're talking about about this knife guy. Yeah. You know, I. I'm I'm going to get into that eventually, bringing yeah. people in like that and show mm -hmm. people what we have available here in Rector. Oh yeah, you know there's it's amazing how many business that we have here. Yeah. But uh, uh, this is uh, well, we have a concert Thursday tonight uh, with a guy named Hunter Creed. You know, we here right. here in the Ford Room we have concerts, uh, you know, once a month. This year we're we're changing up, and I'm going to do a video on, on what we're going to be doing this year. But uh, I've 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 got several guests lined up to, uh, instead of having concerts, we're going to have some meet and greet stuff. Yeah. Where, uh, one of them is going to be radio and TV personalities will be here. Yeah, that'd be and, great. And, and you, you come meet your radio, your favorite disc jockey or TV person, you know, if they're there. And, and we, I have a lot sure. coming. So, uh, but this is, uh, this is uh, the, I think, the following Thursday. It's uh it's March the twenty eighth. Uh, we try to really support the the veterans here and uh, yeah the the uh, Vietnam Day is actually the twenty ninth, but that's Good Friday. Yeah, and Paragul and, uh, J R O T C. Yeah, and and they couldn't uh, the they they weren't able to you know they didn't have school Friday and so right. so they wanted to do it Thursday and they love coming and 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 so. Uh, we have them coming. So, uh, 10 a.m. on the 28th, come and, and help us uh, show our appreciation yeah, to the absolutely. Vietnam veterans. Absolutely. Uh, so, I know we've missed some things. Uh, I don't know. I think we covered almost everything but my shoe size. <laughs> well, we've, <laughs> we've, we're, we've been on here 29 minutes. That's 29 a, minutes. Yeah, wow. yeah. And, it, it, you know, I tell people it flies. Sometimes, you know, before you know it, it's 35, 45 minutes. Well, I've had but a great time. I try. Well, thanks. I'm, I'm glad you came. We, we, I'm we'll, glad. Uh, well, what's going to happen is you're going to think, man, I didn't say this. I didn't say this. I didn't say this. <laughs> And so, <laughs> so what we need, to, so you jot you down some things, and sure, and uh, we'll, we'll we'll do this again. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Tomorrow, tomorrow, uh, <laughs> I tell people I'm I'm my seventies now, so I can forget names if if I want. Well, I was born in the seventies, so we got something in common. <laughs> there you go. Well, I'm I'm interviewing somebody <laughs> at ten o'clock in the morning, so I'll just oh, be wow. here whoever shows up. I'll interview. Them. Yeah. <laughs> You know, uh, Jane Jane Gaywood. She's she's got something to talk about the uh, some 
Vietnam books, I think. And so yeah. to, to go along with the Vietnam day. So she, uh, 10 o'clock in the morning. She's great. Wealth she of information. She, she's yeah. all about Rector. And, you yeah. know, uh, that's the thing about Rector. The one thing that I would like to say, and I know we're probably going to run long, but we're good. Uh, one thing that I would love to say about Rector is this is this is my catchphrase for Rector. If I could put this on a T-shirt, I would, but I haven't figured out how to do it yet. Yeah. And my catchphrase for Rector is no one ever starved to death in Rector. Uh, that's good. Every, everybody in Rector is a neighbor. You know, and neighbors yeah. don't always get along and neighbors don't always see eye to eye. But at the end of the day, everybody in Rector is a neighbor. And uh, you can come and sit and talk like this. You see them in town. You talk. And I haven't found any place in the world that's like Rector. It's just a, it's you know, just a wonderful neighborly place. It's kind of like I told somebody the other day. You, you know, you can go to the hardware store or the bank or drugstore, mm -hmm. you know, in three minutes here. Oh, absolutely, you know, yeah. Uh, unless you meet somebody you know. That's right. My <laughs> wife says every time you go to town for five minutes, it takes an hour and a half. That's right, yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> I do. It, I, it, I run into so, somebody, and I, we talk, and that's we right. talk about what's been going on with us, and it's uh, it's a good time. And it's like that every single day in Rector. It you know? really is. And, and and you're right about the food, I'm going to tell you. <laughs> it, it, there's no, it, there's no, it's not uncommon some no, knock on somebody knock on your door. I can. And they've got a pie. Or, absolutely, I know. can guarantee that if I was hungry and had nothing to eat today, I could go across the street and knock on the door, and they would feed me. Yeah. But you can tell when I stand up that I get fed <laughs> quite a bit. But you know, that's just the way it is here. It's a, it's a wonderful community. I love it here. And apparently, it's always been that way because I've heard Bill Carter talk about that more times than I can. And yeah. you know, and he's like eighty. In his 80s, 86, 87. Yeah. And, and, and he said it was that way. You could go anywhere sure. and, and knock on the door. And even when, when you were a kid, knock on the door and say, hey, I'm hungry. You exactly. Know, apple pie or something to be yeah. waiting. You know? yeah. so, people, uh, you know, people really band together here. Uh, my wife is from Dallas, Texas. And when she moved here, you know, it's kind of culture shock a little bit. And uh, for the longest time, she was Baker's wife. Everybody <laughs> say, oh, you're Baker's wife. Right. And uh, that's how she was known. And in Piggott, she was a mental health therapist. And in Piggott, I was known as Ann's husband. Right. Oh, that's right. Ann's husband because she worked with so many people over there as a therapist. But, uh, you know, when the ice storm hit here, and I know you've probably heard this story a thousand times, but I'm going to tell you, when we had the ice storm and everybody was out of power for weeks and uh, a month or whatever, we all just banded together, took all the food out of harps, took all the food out of all the businesses around that couldn't do anything because they had no power. We put it all in the community center and we ate three meals a day together so, right down as there. a huge family. It was like it was like a huge Labor Day. Is what it was. It like. was. It was. It was like uh, it was just like a big, huge town-sized family, and People. everybody would sit there and eat three meals a day together and visit, and it was a wonderful time. And I, I hope that the people here and other places, I hope they get to have that feeling sometime, and I yeah. hope that the people that live here in Rector don't forget that, that you know, that's a thing here. You know, we just banded together and sat and had meals together, and it was a wonderful time, even though it was a terrible time. Yeah, you know, it, it's funny we don't look back at we We, we say... That it was a terrible time. Exactly. But it, it's amazing that it really wasn't. And, yep. and, and I know you're in on this too. We walked this the street yes. and knocked on every door. Every door. To make sure. And then the and then the, the you know the guards kicked in and they were they were going and getting people's yep. medicine. Yep. You know, wherever they had to go the, uh, to get, you know, and it was yeah, it was a big deal. But that's but that is rector and anybody who Who's ever been involved in Rector knows that's just the way it is. Yeah. You just yeah. don't find that anywhere no. else. You just don't find it anywhere else. And I mean, like I say, uh, nowhere you go, there is no utopian society. You know, nowhere that you go is is everything going to be perfect and everybody's going to get along 100% of the time. But most of the time, people in Rector get along because we're all neighbors. Yeah. And at some point in some time, you're going to have to deal with that person later, so it's better to be good to them than, <laughs> than not, you know. So <laughs> That's right. Everybody That's here right. is a neighbor, and I just I love that about this community. I've been a lot of different places, but I've never, never seen this. Even in other small towns, I've just never seen it like it is here in Rector. So well, I'm, I'm thankful for all you residents in Rector that make it what it is. 
And the ones who made it what it is. Absolutely. They may, they may have left, but they still love Rector. So, Absolutely. Okay, I, I, I'm going to... We're going to cut this thing off, and we're going to do it again sometime. Hey, man, I, I, anytime. I appreciate you coming. We're, yes, sir. Glad I, to be I, here. I had a good time, too. Yes, All I did. All right. All right. Thanks for watching. <laughs>